Hello, 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 Blast Zone kids. How are y'all doing today? Woo! It is so good to see you all. There's papers on my stand. Papers on my stand. Hi! Hi! <laughs> We're going to try that again. <clears throat> so good to see you all. How have you guys been? Hanging in there? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. It's good to see you all. I'm so glad to be back. It's been a long time since I've been here teaching you all in Blasto, and I got to get used to using the clicker again. I'm not used to this sort of thing. All sorts of weird things going on. I was taking a break over the spring because I was teaching in a school. I was at Amelon Elementary way out in Amherst. I taught fifth grade. I taught science and history. How many of you like science? Yeah, science was so much fun. Put your hands down. How many of you like history? Yeah, okay, a good bit of people there. Nice, nice, very nice. Go ahead, put your hands down. I taught a little bit of English. How many of you like English? You, you guys are cool. How many of you like to read? Yeah, okay. Spoiler alert, reading is English. How many of you like math? Mathematics. Yeah, okay, math people. Taught a little bit of math too, so I taught a little bit of everything to the fifth graders. We had a lot of fun. Guess how many kids I had? 78 students. I had 78 students to teach. It was a lot of fun though. I had a great time, but it is great to be back here. And now we're delving into our lesson today. As you all know, we are in the book of Acts. We are talking about how God builds his kingdom. So as we normally do when we do Blast on the let's do a little review. Mike makes some cool stuff. He does this sort of thing. It's awesome. It's amazing. That's cool. Okay, so last week, just as a bit of a refresher for you guys, last week our what's up was, I can find joy in suffering for the name of Jesus. Remember we talked about the apostles and how they were telling people about Jesus and then they were told, don't tell people about Jesus, and they were beaten for it. And the disciples, the apostles, they went out and they were praising God, saying, yeah, we were beaten because we were telling people about Jesus. It seems like a weird thing to do. But they found joy in that, and it encouraged them to keep telling people about Jesus. They didn't stop. Just because somebody came up and said, you need to stop, and they push, push, hit him or beat him. I don't know what they did to him. They did something. So they beat him, and normally you'd think, oh, somebody hit me. I don't want to do this anymore because it hurts. But they didn't do that. They said, yes, it's exciting. We're full of energy now because we're doing something right. We're doing what Jesus is telling us to do. We're going to tell people about Jesus. And so they're all excited about that. So because they suffered, they continued to tell people about Jesus. And more people came to accept Jesus as their Savior because they kept doing that. So our what's up today was serving others is a high calling. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. So... Our gear, though, because we've got all these gear things, this is our theme, and we've got all these little cogwheels with all these things, we're calling them gears. The one that we're focusing on today is choosing deacons. How many of you have heard that word deacon before? Okay, a fair amount of you. Well, guess what? You, you've heard it now, so everybody can be able to raise your hand. How many of you have heard of the word deacon before? Now everybody can raise their hand because you've heard me say it. So when I was really little, maybe like this row here, when I was about your age, I'd heard the word deacon, but I had no idea what it meant. It sounds like the word beacon. It sounds like the word beacon. We're using our English skills here. But that's not what it means. So the word deacon, the official definition for it, is talking about the early church, in, in the time of the early church, which is right around when Acts is happening here. The word deacon means an appointed minister of charity. And we're using, like, oh, great, Mr. Christopher's back, and he's using big words. Yes, I'm using big words, but I'm going to tell you what they mean. An appointed minister. Appointed means like you were chosen. A minister, in this case, is talking about somebody who attends to someone's needs, or they're, they're taking care of somebody else's needs. And then an appointed minister of charity. That's a funky word. It's also a name for some people. I know somebody who's named Charity. So, I thought I heard somebody saying something there. Okay, so charity means that they're a volunteer. They're giving their, they're helping somebody with their needs, and they're volunteering. How many of you have heard of or read the books, A Series of Unfortunate Events? 
Oh, my people. I love you guys. Yes, that book is big on volunteers. Volunteering is a fantastic thing. I recommend everybody try to volunteer for something at some point. So deacons are specifically, here's the short version, because that was all the big stuff. A deacon is a volunteer that is chosen to help the needs of others. That's what they are. Pretty simple, straightforward. So deacons are chosen from within the church to help the church, okay? So we're, picking, we're not just picking people off the street saying, hey, you, we need your help. Come over here and help us with this stuff in our church. No. Deacons are chosen because they're members of the church. They're chosen from within the church to help the church itself. So now that we know kind of what a deacon is, we're going to open God's word. Though you don't need to look it up. That's coming later. I'll read it to you. Don't worry. And I, I, will, I will read it. I won't hold it like this and have you read it off to me. Because if you did, that'd be incredible. You wouldn't have to be blindfolded for archery like Mr. What's-His-Face Peterson, Mr. Muscle Man did. That was kind of weird. Jake, yeah. Jake, his name is Jake. So if you had, that'd be incredible if you had that sort of eyesight. So now that we know what a deacon is, let's get into our story. This is coming from Acts, Acts chapter 6. This is verses 1 through 7, the very first seven verses here. Let me read it to you. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number... A complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. A lot of funky words here. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, repute full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we, they're still talking about themselves, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose these seven men, Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolas, who was a proselyte of Antioch. These are all sorts of big words and funky sorts of names. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. A lot of things going on there, a whole lot of things. And when you first kind of read that, a lot of you might be sitting there even now going, what on earth is going on? What did we just read? What on earth is happening? First, let's, let's break it down. This is exactly what we do. So, verse 1. Now, in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, meaning that more people are beginning to follow Jesus. Back up real quick. When I'm talking about disciples for this story, I'm not talking about the 12 disciples. When I'm talking about disciples, I'm talking about the followers of Jesus. Okay? So, all the people. So, the disciples were increasing in number, meaning more people are following Jesus, so they're getting bigger. More people are joining them. A complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews. Okay, now Hellenists, this is a funky word. This is not talking about somebody who's named Helen with an ists added onto the end of it. It's talking about a group of people. So who are these group of people? Who are the Hellenists? They are Jewish Christians. They're Jews who accepted Jesus as their savior, but their first language is Greek, not Aramaic. Most of the Jews who became Christians, they spoke Aramaic as their first language. So it's kind of like us. Our first language, most of our first language here, is English. If you've learned a second language, like Spanish or French or Japanese or Korean or something like that, if you've learned a second language, that's called your second language, not your first language. Your primary language, your first language, is probably English. Most of the Jewish Christians then, their first language was called Aramaic. But these Hellenists, these other group of people, their first language was not that. It was just called Greek. So if you've never heard of the word Hellenist before, you have now. And you will hear it in history as you guys get older. So when I talk about Hellenists, these are the people who just spoke a different language than the other group of Jewish Christians. That's all it means. Okay? So these Hellenists, though, are the ones who are complaining they're coming up to the apostles, and they're, they're saying, we have a complaint. Well, what is their complaint? 
they're saying that they have widows who were being neglected in the daily distribution. Now, a widow is a woman whose husband has died. So there are a lot of widows throughout the world, and the church is meant to help take care of widows, to help make sure that their needs are met too. And so what would happen is there was food being given out to widows to help make sure that they're taken care of, but the Hellenists are over here saying, hey, our group of widows aren't getting food when you guys are handing them out. And it's not like it was done on purpose. It was just an accident. There's a lot of people to care for. There's a lot of stuff to hand out. It takes a lot of know, work and a lot of lists and names and groups. And here, you take this to that house and you take that to that house and things like that. It's kind of crazy. So what's happening though is this was an accident and the Hellenists are saying, we're, our widows aren't being taken care of. We're supposed to be taking care of them and you guys are handing out food and they're not getting it. This is our complaint. So then the apostles get together. That's what happens next. They get up and they say, all right, we need to find a solution for this because it's a problem. So they gather all the disciples, all the followers of Jesus together and they say, it's not right that we should give up preaching the word of God. We shouldn't stop teaching. We shouldn't stop telling other people about Jesus. So they said, here's what we want you guys to do. From among all of you people, pick seven people, seven men. And they're going to be the ones in charge of handing out the food. And so the whole group of people said, ah, yeah, I like that idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. And they chose seven people. But now we have a question. Why did they have to choose seven people? Why couldn't the apostles just do it themselves? Why couldn't they just be in charge of that? Let's hang on to that question for a second because we're going to take a quick little brain break and play a quick game. Woo! They say, all right, so I need, let's see, who's my fifth graders? Let's see, I think, oh, Jaden Wren. Why don't you come on up here and join me? Oh, I gotta move my stuff. Yay, Jaden, you're the best, you're the best. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. Yes, right there is fine, thank you. Gotta get all my things together. This is the crazy cubes. In this box, it's not a box, in this container, there are cubes. Cubes of all sorts of colors. There are eight different colors here. We got red, we got orange, we got yellow. You can look through them, take a look, feel them. They're this big plasticky kind of thing. There are eight different colors, as you see here on my whiteboard. Eight different colors, and each color has 40 cubes. If you're good at math, eight times four is 32. 32 times 10 is 320. There are 320 cubes inside that container, and here's what you're going to have to do. Inside this bag, I have more things. More things for this game. And don't I'll get some other people up here in a minute, so you won't be the only one. I have these containers with pieces of paper on them that, whoa, spoiler, actually match the colors of all the cubes. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, purple, and a white piece of paper, and I actually wrote the word white on it in case you're getting confused a little bit later. You'll, you'll see why. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna dump those out. We're gonna throw that sucker up there. We're gonna put all these, we have them all on a tray now. Here's what you need to do. I'm gonna throw them all out here. In fact, I'll put them in rainbow color order. Would you like to help do that? We're gonna do that real quick. So that way in the middle of the game, you can keep track of that really easily. Okay, so here's what's going on. You are going to take these and you're gonna sort them out. Blue cubes go in the blue container. Pink cubes, pink container. Purple, purple, red, red. You get the point. I don't have to spell it out anymore. Okay. So I'm going to do this so you can see it a little bit easier, reach it a little bit. Right here, this is for you. You all ready? Okay. So she's going to sort the cubes out, all 320 of them. Ready, set, hold on a second. I forgot. You have 30 seconds to do so. If we break that down, that means she pretty much has to sort 11 cubes per second. No pressure. Ready, set, go. Cheer on, she needs the help. You can do it, Jaden. I'm your biggest fan. 
I love you, Dana. You can do it. <laughs> 20 seconds. She can do it. She can do it. She's going. She's going. She's going. Oh, look at her. She's getting. Oh, I see. She's got a method. She's getting all the reds. You have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop. Oh, okay. Now, I have our board over here. We're going to write down what you got. So here's what I would like you to do. If you could take this marker, make your way over to the board. Let's start at the bottom. How many white cubes did you sort? Zero. zero. Okay, so write a zero next to the white there. How many pink? Zero. Yeah. How many purple? Blue, green, yellow, orange. I see three, six, nine. You got nine orange ones. Reds, it looks like you got all of the reds. So I'm not even going to count them. You got 40. Just write all 40 of them out there. Now, are you good at math? Can you do that? 40 plus 9 equals? Okay. All right. 49. Very good. All right. Well done. Well done. Well done. Now, hang on one second. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I need seven more volunteers. Let's see. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to tag you. We're going to high five you. We're going to come over here and high five you. We're gonna get, let's see, let's see, let's get some guys over here. You guys go on out there, you go on up there. Let's see, no, 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 let's have, let's have Tyler go on up there. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should have eight people on stage right now, is that right? Okay, sit down, sit down. I got my people, okay. Here's what I need you all to do. Each of you now are going to gather around this table by one of these containers. So come grab a container. There needs to be space all around. Everybody just get one. Just get one. Doesn't matter what color. Quickly, 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 quickly. Three, two, one. All right, can everybody access the thing now? All right. Same deal, except you are only sorting the color that matches your container. So if you have the green piece of paper, you're grabbing the green cubes. Jaden has the red, Jaden's grabbing all the red cubes, Tyler's getting all the white cubes, etc., etc. Are we ready? If you need to, come move over here to the side more. It's okay. All right. Are you, can you access them okay? Can you reach them? Okay. 30 seconds again. Wait, 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 wait. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Hands down, hands down, hands down, hands down. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, they're going. Oh, they can do it. They can do it. Careful, careful, careful. La 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 la. 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop! Stop! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! All right. Holy cow. Holy cow. Yeah, if they fell on the floor, that's okay. Put them back on the tray. Okay, so let's see. We have a whole lot of cubes in here. Go ahead and count the cubes in your container. Just count them real quick. I think we may have beaten our number. Wow. All right, Jaden, let's start with you. You're ready. Jaden, how many did you get? 32, she says. All right, let's see. Who else is ready? What do you have? 14 orange. And 14 pink. Oh, both of them got 14. How many do you have? 11. 11. We got 11 purples. 31. 30. Who said 31? You did. 31. 31 blue. Sorry, I was looking at somebody else when that was said. What did you get? Oh, 15. What are you? You have the white ones? We got 15 and you got 13 yellows. Who has green? How many? 15. All right, you know what? I'm not even going to do the math on that one. I'm pretty sure we got more than 49. If we just count the 10s here, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 120. We, we, we beat that. We blew it out of the water. So well done, you guys. Hold on really quick. I have... Where my bag? There's my bag. I have a thing for each of you to take. If y'all like the you, you get one. Get one. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get them out of the container. Just take one. Just take one. And then go on back to your seat for me. 
And thank you all very much. Give them a hand. Let's take one. Let's take one. Oh, look at that. I got a cleanup crew. I don't have to do anything now. Just leave them there. That's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was fantastic. You guys did a lot better than I thought you did. Originally, I was only going to give you 10 seconds. Can you imagine doing that with just 10 seconds? It's absolutely crazy. So, let's return back to our story. That was just a bit of a brain break. Now we're getting back to our story. Oh yeah, I forgot. Everybody dance? No, all right, stop dancing, we're done. Okay, we're getting back to our story, Acts chapter six. Remember, we had our question. Why did the apostles say, we need seven men to be in charge of handing out the food to these widows, to be in charge of that? Why, why, did, why did they have to do that? Why couldn't they focus on doing that? It's sort of like our game here. When Jaden was up here by herself, she only got 49 cubes. She sorted all the reds and she got some of the oranges and that was about it. So she only got some of it sorted. But when we had everybody else up here, if we just counted the tens-ish, we just got 120 plus, meaning we got more than that. We got a whole lot more. We got a whole lot more done. And we're much more efficient with more people. So it's the same kind of thing with this issue. The apostles are saying, you know what, right now, we, our job is to preach. Our job is to tell people about Jesus. We can't focus on praying for all the needs of the people. We can't focus on teaching God's word. We can't focus on solving every little detail of every little issue all the time. And so they said, we need help. So we need seven men to be in charge of this. And so that's what they did. They chose seven men, one of whom was named Stephen. Remember that name, Stephen. He's mentioned as one of the first deacons in our story today. However, our story next week is about Stephen, specifically. So when you hear him next week, you can go, oh wait, he was one of the first deacons that was chosen. He was chosen to help hand out the food because the apostles asked for volunteers. So I want you to remember that. Stephen was a volunteer that was chosen to help the needs of others. And so the Let's backtrack, though. The apostles needed help, so they got help. Well done for the apostles, because they couldn't just do it all themselves. They needed more people. And our church kind of acts the same way. You guys may know Pastor Nathan Smith is the senior pastor of our church. He can't do everything that needs to be done in the church all by himself. He has to delegate. That's a word which here means recruit other people to do the job. So he has to give things off to other people. There are many pastors. Pastor Tony is one. Pastor Mike is another one. We have Pastor Jeff. We've got Pastor Kent for the teenagers. We've got people all over the place. But then the pastors also have assistants. And sometimes the assistants have other assistants or volunteers that will come in to help them. So our church has to work together to get things done. We have deacons here at our church. And this is a picture of some of these or excuse me, of our deacons right now. You might recognize some of these people up here. We saw this person over here this morning. Her husband's also here. Some of their kids might be here. There might be some other kids who are in here in Blast Zone or across the hallway there with the youth. But those are our deacons. What is it exactly that the deacons do? Because we don't exactly have them just get together to hand out food to widows like they did back in Acts. So what is it that they do? These are some of the things that our deacons will do. They will help by serving communion. If you've ever been up in big church in the worship center, we have the big silver platters with all the little plastic cups of juice and the little wafer things. That's communion. Remember they pass that down the rows. The, when, um, when Pastor Nathan gets up and he speaks a little bit, then he prays and then he picks up those silver platters, there's a group of men sitting at the front that stand up and he gives one to each of those people. Those are the deacons. They're the ones who then go out to pass them along the rows so that everybody can get them. So that's one thing that they do. They also help care for people here at Heritage Baptist Church. They help make decisions about the church. Lots of times we have to get people together and say things like, I don't know, how are we going to spend this money? Or how are we going to solve this problem? The deacons are there to help Pastor Nathan think through these things and to come up with solutions. They are also there to help organize ways that we, as a church, can minister to our community, to Lynchburg, since this is where we live. So those are some of the things that they do. And we need volunteers. 
Take a look around you. Look for your blast zone coach. Look for your blast zone coach. Your blast zone coach is a volunteer. They're not getting paid to sit in here and watch you. They're a volunteer. Volunteering is an extremely important thing that every church needs. And our church is so big, we definitely need volunteers. We always need volunteers. These deacons are volunteers for our church to help our, serve our church in this way. They are very important to what we do here. But you can't just pick anybody off the street. Not just anybody can be a deacon. If you look at this list up here, this comes from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. If you read that part of scripture, it's specifically for qualifications or things that a deacon needs to be able to have or do in order to be a deacon. You can't just go out and say, hey, Joe, let's get that guy off the street and bring him in here to help serve Heritage Baptist Church. You can't do that. No. You can't just find somebody walking in the hallway at church. Hey, do you go to Heritage Baptist Church? Yeah, all right, he can be a deacon. Let's bring him in. No, you don't just do that. There's a list of things that deacons have to be. They have to be honest and truthful, so they can't be known to be liars. They can't go around lying about different things. They have to be selfless, meaning they're not selfish or they're not greedy. So like if, you, if they run a business or if they work, you look at how they work. Are they being honest there? Are they being selfish saying, oh, you know what? I'm going to see if I can try and earn some extra money here and be dishonest with it. No, no, no. You can, shouldn't do things like that. They are supposed to understand the gospel and they are supposed to show that in their behavior and how they live. In other words, they need to show that they are trying to live the way Jesus does, did. They are also supposed to be a good leader they're supposed to be faithful to their wives. They're supposed to also manage their kids. I don't know if you could read that. It says children. And their household well. Because if they, if, you, if they were like go home and their house is like a disaster and nothing ever gets done because they can't manage or take care of their own house or their own kids, do you, do you really think we could trust them to help manage a church? Probably not. So these are different pieces of evidence that have to be seen in a deacon's life in order to become a deacon, to be chosen as a volunteer for that. And so on that note, let's go ahead and look it up. Go ahead and get your Bibles out. We're going to look up 1 Timothy 3.13. I forgot, there's a second slide. 1 Timothy 3.13. We're going to take a look at the very end of this list now. Got your Bibles, get it going. Y'all are quiet. Oh, I like that. You have quiet fingers. Gonna give you about 10 more seconds. I'll do it a little slowly in my head, though. Gonna go with, let's say, five. Gonna go with a four. Gonna go with a three, two. And one. And three, two, one, shh, eyes this way. There we go. Okay, so let's look at that together here. First Timothy 3.13. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. This is the very end of this list, this list of qualifications that's not up on the thing anymore. After they say deacons have to be honest, they have to be good leaders and all of these different things, this is the very last verse. Those who serve well as deacons gain good standing for themselves and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Well, what does that mean? Good standing is talking about respect and appreciation because think about it. It's not easy being a deacon. It's not easy being somebody like a pastor. It can be difficult to be volunteers too. People who volunteer for things like that, we should respect what they do. We should respect who they are because they're, they're doing it themselves. They're willingly coming forward saying, hey, I'll help. I see that there's a need and I'm going to help fill that need. We should respect them and we should appreciate what they do because they're saying, I'm going to help. I'm going to do it. They're taking what's called initiative. That's an important word. So go ahead and close your Bibles. We're going to move on real quick. We are almost done. Now the question is, how do we apply this? Let's go all the way back to our what's up. Serving others is a high calling. Pastor Mike mentioned earlier 
how in Matthew 20, 28, that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Because there was an argument going on with his disciples saying, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. The greatest person is the kind of person who will go and serve others. And so I want you guys to think to yourselves for a moment. If you do have your Bibles, close them and put them away, please. I want you to think to yourselves for a moment. Not everybody is called to be a deacon. When we're talking about called, it's not like a phone call. You're not going to go, hello. Yes, this is God. Oh, hello, God. Yes, I want you to be a deacon. Oh, well, I never really thought about that before. But sure, why not? If God's asking me, yeah, I might as well do that. No, God's not going to call you and say, I want you to be a deacon. Not like on the telephone. But not everybody is called to be a deacon. Not everybody is meant to be a deacon. But if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you are called to serve other people as Jesus did. So what are some ways that you could serve? Maybe it's in your house. Maybe it's here at church. Maybe it's at school or something else like that. I know it's summer and we're not thinking of school right now, not till next year. But what are some ways that you can serve other people? And you might think to yourself, there's no way that I can serve Mr. Christopher, really. I'm just too little. No, you're not. Everybody can serve. It could be as simple as walking up to your parents and saying, hey, is there something I can do to help you today? Your parents will probably look at you like you're an alien from outer space. What did you say? You want to help me with something? You want to, I'm folding laundry. You want to help me fold laundry? Well, not really, but I'm asking because I want to serve. Or maybe they're doing the dishes, or maybe your dad's mowing the lawn or something like that. Or another way you could serve is if you know how to do something, like let's say you do know how to fold laundry, and you go down to the laundry room, you see that there's a load ready to come out of the dryer. You can get it out of the dryer, you can fold it, and you can put it away yourself without being asked to do so. Your parents would love you forever. I mean, they already love you forever, but they would love you more forever because you did it without being asked because you chose to serve your parents that way. So think about some ways that you could serve at home, at church, at school, or with your friends while you play around the neighborhood, whatever that might be. Because looking back at Acts chapter 6, verse 7, the very last verse that was there said that more people came to accept Jesus as their savior, including a lot of Jewish priests. That I thought was interesting. Because what it meant was a lot of those priests probably saw that the deacons, like Stephen, managed everything really well with their volunteering and their service, and they said, that's interesting. Why are they doing that for free? And they may have come to know Jesus because they saw the example that these people were setting. So being an example and serving others can be a great way to tell people about Jesus. So think to yourselves about how you can serve somebody this week. Let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the chance to come to Blast Zone and learn more about you. I pray for each of these boys and girls and for the Blast Zone coaches that are here, every person in this room, that you will help us think about how we can serve somebody else this week. Serving is a high calling. It's something you have called everybody to do. I pray that you can help us find something specific to do this week for somebody in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it is time for Shockwave.